Good morning. It's good to be, woo, it's good to be with you guys this morning. Hey, let me just say something about the Global Leadership Summit really fast, because uh, we've just had a lot of questions like, what, what is that all about? And uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a leadership training that's been going on for years and years. It's held in Chicago. It will be live streamed here and our Angola campus. They do a lot of live streams all over the world, actually. Uh, uh, renowned speakers, these are people who are leaders. It's been great. We've, uh, we used to take, when our, when our staff wasn't as big as it is now, we used to take them to Toledo for two days uh, for this conference. Uh, now we're just bringing it here. And so it's open to anyone, anyone who wants to work on your leadership, who wants to become a better leader. So it's to whoever wants to do that, uh, we would love to have you join us. Uh, if you have other questions about it, please just ask me or Nate. Uh, we'll let you know all we can about it. And uh, we're excited to be able to host, meaning that uh, there will be, uh, we've invited the local schools. If you know other people that have leaders or over leaders, let us know. Uh, we want to invite them. Uh, we've invited our school, our, uh, our town administrators and things like that. We just want to make le- leaders better. So if you, every one of you lead something, and uh, if you want to get better in your leadership, uh, this is something you want to do. So anyway, we're going to wrap up our series today, Overwhelmed. And uh, I, I was kind of watching over there as that song played, uh, that there's got a good beat, and a lot of you are just doing the head bop. And I'm assuming it's because you knew the song, or, or you're just like, yeah, pressure, yeah, pressure. I get it, I get it. And, and I think a lot of us do. A lot of us, uh, why we put this series together is because we know that a lot of people are going through a lot of different things and are overwhelmed. And so today, uh, I'm going to wrap it up, and my topic today is, is anxious to carefree. And I thought it sounded like a good idea to preach about anxiety. And then I thought, what am I doing? That's a big subject. That's a big subject that a lot of people deal with, and it's different for everybody. And so I thought, okay, uh, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, Max Ocato said this about anxiety. He said, uh, the presence of, a, of anxiety is unavoidable, but the prison of anxiety is optional. Uh, and I just love that. I, I love that. And, and uh, so today what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some things. What I'm really going to do is I'm going to share from my own life. I've experienced this stuff. I'm going I'm to share part of my story. Uh, I'm going to share uh, what I've done. And now I know that you're different. And I know how you've experienced been different. And I know what you've been through is different. And I know that. So all I'm doing today is telling you what I've experienced. But here's two things that I know for sure. Number one is, I know this for sure, that God is greater than whatever makes you anxious. God is greater. Whatever it is, whatever you experience, however it's been, however hard it is, I know this, God is bigger. God is bigger than that. And here is the second thing that I know for sure today, that, the, that somebody in this room right now is probably thinking this, that's great, but you don't understand where I am and what I'm going through. And I agree with that too. I don't. I really don't. And, and you can say that and because I think that's for all of us. We, we all, whether you've experienced it, if you've experienced depression and anxiety, your story is your story. And how you've experienced it is what you've experienced. It. And it's not like mine, uh, and it's not the same. And you, you will probably look at me and go, well, mine's a lot worse. And it, it prob- probably is. And so uh, I just know that for a fact. But anxiety and depression, and I put the two together because I think they kind of go together. Uh, what I've experienced, at least, is when times I've had anxiety, it's also led in times of depression. And times of depression have led into times of anxiety in my life. And so I've been, I've been battling on and off uh, probably about 30 years now that uh, for in some way, shape, or form, uh, all kinds of different things. Uh, I've experienced, I called them my dips. Uh, matter of fact, I would, I would warn my wife. For a long time, I didn't. Because I didn't even know what was going on. There, there came a time in my life that, that I, would, I would sense these things coming on. And I, I would tell Gail, because before that, I would be grumpy. And it would cause arguments. And so I would give her warners. I, I would say, honey, I think a dip's coming on. <laughs> and, it, and it helped her to deal with me. And, uh, and so I think that was good. But uh, in, 20, in October 2022 uh, was a time that I experienced myself Probably the, uh, I realized how real anxiety can be. I realized how dark and deep and uh, that it could get. And uh, again, 
<laughs> with my experience, I know there's some of you that have experienced worse. Uh, but in uh, October of 2022, I remember sitting right here uh, and had to preach that previous Sunday. And I didn't want to get up here. It was the last thing I wanted to do. And it was the hardest time that I've ever preached. And I, I was just not doing well. And I, I, I got it. I made it through. God helped me through. Uh, that following Wednesday, I'm sitting in my office, and I am trying to write a message, and I can't think. I literally cannot think. Uh, my thought life was about that far. I, I could think, and then I just would lose it. And, and Pastor Rick uh, pops in my office like he often does, and, and he'll, he'll, him and I have an agreement. That if we ask each other if we're okay, we have to be truthful. We, we're, him and I have an agreement. We're not going to be secret liars. And uh, so we're truthful with one another. And he looked at me and he said, are you all right? And I said, no, I'm not. I'm not. And uh, I went home that day. I went home uh, late October in uh, 2022. I went home and it just got worse. Um, I began to experience all kinds of physical stuff. Um, the good thing was I had previously, just before this, had a lot of uh, tests ran, just, just, uh, just tests like I do a, a, a heart smart. Uh, they do that through part view. I would, uh, I'm not advertising it, but I would do it if I were you. Uh, I did that. I had a bunch of blood work done. A lot of things were done, and so I knew I was pretty healthy. And why am I feeling like this? I began to have numbness in my feet. I experienced vertigo on a regular basis. Uh, I, was, I was shaking to, to where I couldn't stop. Uh, blurred vision. Um, I would literally go from the, the bed to the couch, and, and that was about it. I didn't want to see anyone, and Rick wouldn't quit coming to my house, <laughs> which is good. I'm so glad he would, but, uh, but I, I just didn't want to see anybody, and he was relentless, and I, and I love him for it. And uh, I mean, I just thought I was losing my mind. I, I really did. And my, my doctor, I was talking to him, and he knew all these other tests that I'd had. And he said, well, let's do a brain scan. I thought, yeah, I don't think there's anything there. And uh, good news there was. Good news. We're not going to talk about the size, but it was there. So, so anyway, uh, just a lot of the tests. None of this stuff made sense. None of it made sense. That's anxiety. Nothing makes sense. There was no reason for it. Uh, and so I, uh, I found myself... Uh, which by the, by the Lord's leading, um, Gail and I found this place in Chicago called the Meyer Clinic and uh, end up uh, in this clinic for three weeks. And uh, it was humbling, very humbling, but uh, good. Uh, I felt like I was where God wanted me um, and uh, a lot of neat things happened there. And so I started coming out of it. Uh, I got home a couple of days before Christmas that year, didn't get to participate at the church and anything. Uh, in January, came back to, to work and... Um, uh, slowly started in back into some things, and then I had an experience that I want to share with you this morning. Uh, this, this is just, again, this is my story. Uh, I don't claim to have the edge on knowing how to deal with anxiety and depression. I only know what I know. I only know what I've experienced, and, and uh, you can argue a lot of things, but you can't ar argue my story, and uh, it's my story. And so uh, I want to share those things with you, and, you know, I, I understand I have a lot more compassion for people now who go through depression, um, and I think when you experience it, you do. Uh, sometimes, if you've never experienced that, sometimes you, you look at people and you, you, you wonder. You're like, oh, you know, and are, they, are they putting it on? Are they? And, I, and I'm telling you, they're not. They're not. It's real. It's, it's real stuff. Uh, and you know, when you fall into that hole and you start having crazy thoughts and crazy symptoms, and, and you, start, you start wondering, am I crazy? Am I just downright crazy? And I, I want to tell you this today, that there's craziness in it, but you're not crazy. You're not crazy, if that, if that helps any. Uh, you're, you're not crazy. You may, you may feel like it, but uh, what I want to do is I want to share two things. Uh, one is a what, and the other one is a who. Now, there, there's, there's no hiding who the who is, right? I mean, when you're ever in a church and a question is asked, the answer is always Jesus, right? That's, a, that's always the answer. Uh, so uh, you're not going to be surprised by the who, uh, but I think I want to just uh, bring it a little bit differently. But uh, anyway, I want talk to talk to you about a what and a who. And the what is what I did, uh, what happened to me in the midst of it. Uh, again, I said that uh, I've dealt with this for, for about 30 years. I've been on medications. Uh, I'm for medications. They're good. Um, I'm... I'm I'm excited, and listen, this is for me right now, not for anybody else. Uh, in January, when I had this event happen to me, I felt like I was supposed to go off all medications, and I've been off of them for two years now. Uh, I'm doing some, some thank you. 
Uh, I'm not saying this, that you should do that at all. That, again, this is my story, okay? And, uh, and so I'm, I do some natural stuff, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that, that you can do. If you, if you type it into Google, there's all kinds of stuff you can do for depression and anxiety. You know, you can exercise and eat right and dance, they say. Dancing's good. I just can't dance. But anyway, um, the, but <laughs> I don't know what that comment was, but we, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, if, if, uh, even if you don't experience uh, anxiety and depression, I'm, praise God for you. Praise, praise God. I'm so glad that you've never had to. Uh, but listen, I think, there, I think in the, the things I'm going to share today, it's something you could grab too. No matter what, I, I don't have anything earth-shattering today. I don't have anything that, that nobody's ever talked about today. I'm going to tell you what happened in my, in my circumstances and why I am where I am today um, because I feel like I'm the healthiest that I've been in a long time. And uh, so here's, here's the what. Um, this is what I did. And, and some of you are going to look at me and go, well, about time you did that. And, uh, and that's okay. That's okay. But uh, this is, this is what, what, what I did um, in mid, uh, mid-January. And what happened to me was... I was sitting in my office and I was listening to a teaching by another pastor, and what he had to share just hit me like a, like a ton of bricks uh, that day, and it, and it literally changed my life and changed how I see things today, and, uh, and so what, what happened was uh, I decided, I, I heard this scripture, this scripture came up, uh, John 8, 32, uh, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And I, I thought that day, I thought, you know what, what I've been doing with anxiety and depression for years was I just kind of wait until it passes. I just kind of lay low until I come out of what I would call a dip, and, and that's how I dealt with it. And, and I realized that I wasn't challenging it. And, that, and I read that scripture, I heard that scripture, and I'm like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start challenging my depression and my anxiety with truth, because that's, I didn't do it. I don't know, those of you who have experienced it, you, anxiety is a liar. It would tell you all kinds of stuff about you that's not true. And I would just sit there and wait it out and wait until I got over. And I thought, no longer, I'm going to start, I'm starting to fight this stuff with the truth, and uh, and so so that's that's what I decided to do. I uh, I I did. I said, oh, okay. I mean, even simple things. This is. I, I just want to try to make this simple for you. My, it, like like if I some there was times where I had anxiety where if I walked into a group like this, if I had to walk in front, I wouldn't do it because I would feel like you're all looking at me. That's a lie, right? Because none of you are looking at me. And so I just even that I would try to I would I would face it with truth. I would say to myself, "Is that true, Byron? Is that true about you?" And I'd be like, "No." And I would begin to fight it like that. But well, which we all know it's spiritual warfare, right? So Second Corinthians ten says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to dem- demolish strongholds, and that's exactly what anxiety and depression is. It's a stronghold. It, is, it will take you farther than you're willing to go. It will keep you farther or longer than you're willing to stay. It, it, it's, a, it's a stronghold. And yet we have weapons, and it's truth. Verse 5 says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So I would start to say, is that what God says about me? And I'd be like, no, I had this discussion. I don't know if you ever saw me talking to myself, but that's what I was doing. I was, I, was, I was taking my anxiety and putting truth to it, going, is that true? Is it true? And uh, this is, it says, uh, we demolish arguments and every presentation, uh, pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God, and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That's what I started to do. Everything that started going through my head, I started making it obedient to Christ. Does this line up? And if it didn't, I'm like, it's gone. I'm not giving you a second. It's, it's just gone. And I don't, I don't want to make that sound like it's easy because it's not, but that's what I started to do. And it goes on. It says, we take captive every thought to make you obedient to Christ, and we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. And I'm just telling you, a revelation hit me in my office that day. I realize, and I know I should know this. I know some of you are going, oh, come on, Byron, you've been our pastor and you didn't know this. I knew this, but something happened on that day. 
And this, I didn't see this visual, but I, I just, I'll, I'll show you. Nate, could you help me a second? You're going to be the enemy, okay? <laughs> it's good. Okay, we're going to have a little battle up here, a little squirt gun fight. Pick which, which one you want. Oh, that isn't. Okay. All right, you go go down there. So this is what I realized. I realized I, I the weapons I'm fighting against. The <laughs> what are you doing? This I'm just telling you. This is what happened to me. I realized. You know what? My weapons are greater than anything the enemy can ever bring. And I know you're going to, you're our pastor. I had a revelation that day. I'm like, I knew, go ahead, take a shot. I, I knew that the enemy was going <laughs> to, I knew that the enemy, boy, you know what, I really want to do this. <laughs> I really want to do this, but, but I'm not going to. But, I, you know, Nate and I are going to have a squirt gun fight. You can put, put, it, put it down. Put it down right here and I can wipe my glasses off now. <laughs> you're not the enemy, by the way. I had this revelation that my weapons that I have are so much bigger than the enemy's, and I know I should have known that, but something happened on that day. Something happened to me on that day, and, I, and, and this, listen to the scripture, Ephesians 6, 10 through 18 says, finally, and I thought that's what happened to me, finally, finally be strong in the what? In the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. I don't know, I don't know if you understand this. When you, when you turn your feet and follow Jesus, you're in a battle. That's when the battle, the battle starts between good and evil. The battle start, starts between Jesus and, and, the, and, and Satan, whatever you want to call him. It's a battle for our lives. We're, it's, we're in a constant battle. It is a fight. That's the devil's schemes. I mean, it happens like, like what, like every minute of every day? Is that when it happens? It's just ongoing. There's battle. That's that, that, the devil's schemes. That's what wants to ruin your marriage. That, that devil schemes, that wants, that's what wants to mess up with your relationships. That's what wants, to, wants you to, to do all kinds of crazy things. And he says, to stand up under it, we're going we're gonna to hold to the power of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. He says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against power, the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, because of that fight, because of that battle, listen, when you do this, <laughs> when you go public with your faith, guys, no, the devil doesn't like that. The devil doesn't like when you go public with your faith. The battle's on. The battle's on. Don't, don't give up. Don't turn back. Press through. Press on. It says that, therefore, because of this warfare we're in, therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth. The belt of truth. Buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith which, <laughs> with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Faith. We're going to talk about that in the next series. 17 says, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Listen, you hear us talk about this all the time. You've got to be in the Word. Listen, you'll, you definitely can't fight anxiety and depression outside of this thing. This is it right here. It's your answer. It's what we talk about all the time. That's why we, kept we, we, we do 714s. That's why we tell you, get in the Bible app with us. Get in the Word of God. So listen, even if you don't fight with anxiety and depression, get in the Word. I don't know what's ahead for you. I don't know, but now's the time. Now's the time. Don't wait until you're in that dark place because it's hard. It's hard. I, I remember. I remember Zeb was was asking me. He goes, man, I bet I bet in that dark time you really lo relied on your life first. And I said, dude, I couldn't even do that. I couldn't even do that. Now's the time. People, get in the Word now. Break open your Bible. 
find some way to get into your Bible and read what it says. He says, and that's our, that's our weapon. This is our sword. This is, this is what we fight with. And then he says, verse 18, and pray, pray. <laughs> pray in the spirit and on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert always and keep on praying for the Lord's people. It's a constant fight. And the Bible talks about our minds. Listen, anxiety will attack right here. It'll make you think crazy stuff. That's why the Bible says in Romans, says renew your minds. Philippians says think on these things. Joshua says meditate on God's word. Proverbs says guard your thoughts. Colossians says set your mind on things above. 1 Peter says be sober-minded and watchful. Uh, 2 Corinthians says take every thought captive. There's many, many verses that say right here, listen, everything we do starts right here. Every action we take, it always starts with a thought. And when our thoughts are crazy and we're not lining them up the Word of God, we think crazy things and we do crazy things. So the what's important, the what you do is important. That's what I did. In 2022, I decided, you know what, from now on, every thought that comes to my mind, I'm going to make it line up to the Word of God. And that's what I've been doing for two years. And I know, I know I'm slow. I'm slow, but that's where, that's where I'm at. But let me talk to you now about the who. I'm going to read a scripture that probably most of you in this room know. You've heard it sometime or another. Psalms 23. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me to lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside still waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Well, why, why, why will you fear no evil? Because you, because you have a plan? Because you, because you have a, a book you read? Because you, have, you heard a sermon? Because you have a formula? No, none of those. I will fear no evil because you are with me. You are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, your goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I tell you what, sometimes anxiety and depression will make you think things are following you. But I'll tell you what's following you, the goodness of God, the love of God will follow you all of your days. And I had a revelation that day on that scripture because this guy was speaking. And I, and I, and I saw it differently. All of a, all of a sudden, I, I saw that scripture differently and I pictured, I, I pictured that, that verse differently. And, uh, you know, if you Google the shepherd, the Lord is my shepherd, this is probably what you're going to see. Nothing wrong with it. It's a good picture. That, that's probably what you'll see. One, you've, you've probably seen that picture. Nothing wrong with that picture. Please hear me. Nothing wrong with that picture at all. But when I was in the dark, that guy didn't do it for me. And you, you I don't know, maybe, maybe you're here today and you're like, eh, that's a nice picture. It just doesn't do it for me. All of a sudden, you know, when you're, when you're deep in the pitfalls and you realize how massive the challenge is, you're like, I don't, I don't know if it's that guy. That's nice, but I don't know if it's that guy. I, I, need, I, need, some, I need something bigger. And, I, and I, I was realizing in John 10, 10, it said, it said, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I, I have come to give you life. And I'm like, and I'm like going, that's big. I need life. That's That's big. That's big. The guy that I the guy that I'm thinking about it said that he 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 carries a rod and a staff, and so I just began to picture it differently. Again, nothing wrong with that. Maybe that's okay for you today. And that that good shepherd right there is good. I mean, look at that. That's good. But at that moment, I needed a big God. I I, I need. He, he said that his rod and his staff would comfort me. 
And I began to see him differently. Matter of fact, I've searched the internet. I can't find a picture that matches what I, what I experienced. I can't find it. Because I, I'm like, oh, a staff. Yeah, that staff, that, that staff brings me back. Sometimes, you, you know, he refers to us as sheep. That's not a great compliment, just so you know. <laughs> That's not a real big compliment for us. Because we do some dumb stuff, don't we? Sometimes we get ourselves in some trouble. And, he, and that staff, he'll pull, he'll pull me back, he'll pull me back. That's the kind of God that I need to see. I need to see, I not, not only that, but I need to see the God that has the rod in his hand. If that, if, that, if that shepherd right there, if a coyote or a wolf came after one of them sheep, he's going he's gonna to knock the snot out of that thing to protect it. And I thought, that's the God I need to see. I need, I need to see. I need to, I need to have an experience here. I need to have a visual of my God with a rod swatting away the enemy. That's what I need to see. And I'm sorry that didn't do it at the, at the time. I need to see this big God. Because that's the kind of God I serve. A God with a staff and a rod that will correct me, keep me where I need to be, and he will fight off the enemy. Because here all this time I thought I had to fight off the enemy. And he's like, no, 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 no. I got you. I got you. You do your part and I'll swat him in the head. You do your part and I'll swat him in the head. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's fighting. That's what happened to me on that day. I began to see God totally different. And maybe you need to, too. Listen, we serve a big God. Sometimes we have a pocket-sized God. We pull him out when we need him. No, he won't fit in your pocket. I'm telling you, he won't fit in your pocket. He's, he's a big God. My shepherd, my shepherd isn't meek and mild when it comes to leading me through the darkest valley. He's not, there's not anything meek and mild about him. He's swatting the rod to protect me. He's got my back. Do you know that God's got your back? I don't, know, I don't know what you're going through, but do you know God's got your back? He's got you covered. He's got your back. See, anxiety is it's a symptom. It's a symptom mostly, mostly, and I know this, this is hard to, hard to agree with sometimes, but really it's a symptom mostly of something we're afraid of. You may not even realize it's, that it's something you're afraid of, or maybe, like me, you don't want to admit that. But it's a symptom be, from being afraid. And whatever you're afraid of, God is in charge of. God is bigger than. He wants to be your shepherd. And the true test is, will you keep your eyes on him today? Whether, whether you're going through something like this or not, maybe, maybe you're not, you still need to do what I'm about to say. Will you keep your eyes on him? Matthew 6 says, but seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Uh, Isaiah 26 says, keep, uh, you keep him perfect in peace whose mind stayed on thee because they trust you. Colossians says, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Philippians says, uh, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is uh, excellent, think on these things. Psalms 25 says, lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are God of the God of my salvation. I wait on you all day. Hebrews 12 says, look to Jesus, the founder and the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And Psalm 121 says, I lift up my eyes from the hills. From where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And so I'm telling you, we've got to keep our head up. Listen, listen to this psalm. I want, to, I want to wrap up today with this psalm. Psalm 16, 8 and 9. David wrote this. You know David who beat Goliath? David wrote this. He said, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, my tongue rejoices, and my body will also, my body also will rest secure. Because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. I don't know about you, but when I've experienced anxiety and depression, my heart wasn't glad, my mouth wasn't singing praises, and my body wouldn't rest. 
But this says, David, David says, when I keep my eyes on the Lord, then then, then my heart will be glad and my mouth will sing praises and my body will rest. Have, have you heard this new term out? It's called, it's called tech snack. They're, they're saying it because we're doing this all the time. They say, they say we're getting this thing called tech snack, meaning that the, the pressure on your neck, because the, your head becomes heavier and it causes I- injury, it causes issues, because we're always looking down. That's why we need to look up. Do you, do you know that this is, David is talking about this. David says, when I keep my eyes on him, no matter what I face, David, David the one who beat Goliath, Remember the story about David and Goliath, and they're, they're out there, and this, this mammoth man named Goliath is taunting them. He's taunting the, the, the army. He's like, come on, who's going to take me on? Who's going to take me on? And everyone out there, every, every person out there was fixated on the fact of how big he was. Everyone in the army is like, wow. Their eyes were on him. They're like, wow, look at how big. And David came out and he goes, hey, I realize they all think you're, you're big stuff, but my eyes are up here. David had his eyes on the Lord. David said, I'll, I'll fight him through the strength of the Lord. And he, be, he brings down Goliath. We've got to keep our eyes up. You've got to keep your eyes up. Will you keep your eyes up today? See, the the antidote for fear is not courage. The antidote for fear is faith. Faith in him. It's faith in him. Listen, I need to know something today. I, I need to know you won't give up. I need to know that. No matter how hard it gets, no matter how dark it gets, I need to know you won't give up. Don't give up. Just lift your eyes up. Lift your eyes up and start fighting. Your weapons are way bigger. It'll take time. It will take time, but fight through it. He's the good shepherd. We need today to choose to set the good shepherd continually before us. Listen, whether you're going through it or not, just in life, you're still in a battle. Just in life, will you keep your eyes up on the good shepherd? And you know what? Maybe that picture is good for today for you. It's good. Maybe there will be a day you're like, that's not him. He's got a big rod. And he's going to protect me. He's going to be there for me. He's going to fight for me. He will fight for you. I think it's in Exodus somewhere. Somebody gave me this scripture one time. It said, it said, uh, you, you, it basically says this. I'm paraphrasing. This is the buck version. It, said, it, says, it says, you don't need to fight. All you need to do is be still. Just be still. Let him fight. Let's pray.